My husband and I have twin daughters who are eight years old, and they have been doing ballet for four years. They are both very good. Both girls have always done well. They are in a very good school, and I am proud of them. I think ballet is good for them, and my husband agrees. However, recently their teacher came to me and said that she thinks Maria should begin point early and start taking classes a year up. Typically, at the school they are at, the girls begin at either 10 or 11, with some exceptions. And Maria was an exception. I told her I would need to think first. I did not tell the twins and only my husband. He thought it would be a very good opportunity, but I was hesitant. This was because I had read about the effects pointy can have on their feet and bones if it is done too early. I told my husband I was going to decline the teacher's offer and that I don't think it would be safe for Maria to begin point at such a young age. While I did not do ballet growing up, I did rhythmic gymnastics. And I know the importance of taking care of your body because I have a lot of pain now. Maria is also not physically mature in any way. She's quite petite, and I don't think it would be good for her at all. However, my husband was not happy with my decision. He thinks I am depriving Maria of this opportunity because Dina did not get the same opportunity and that it's important for her to have all opportunities that come her way. He always favored Maria in some ways and believes that she will be a star and a very good future. It is not fair to Dina at all, who is very intelligent and a beautiful dancer, but it is what it is. Because they are identical, they are quite competitive, but Dina's is more reserved. She's more anxious and gets overwhelmed easily, while Maria is very social and speaks well. And my husband believes that is important. It bothers me that he prefers her, and Maria has developed a bit of a complex because of it, but she's grounded enough. Personally, I believe the reason why Maria Seaton is getting offered this opportunity is that her teachers prefer her to Dina. Dina's only issue is that she struggles remembering sometimes, which frustrates her teachers. But that has nothing to do with her strength or technique. And to me, they are very equal with all of those. I have communicated the reasons for my decision to my husband several times, but he is still very upset that I've made this decision. While I do generally go by the rule that a decision in a marriage should be made by both of us, I really didn't want my daughter having permanent physical issues because she has a small chance of becoming professional in the future. It isn't worth it, but my husband just hasn't taken this well. He's told Marie about my decision and now both girls are upset. Marie is angry because she thinks I'm being unfair and taking away her opportunity. And Dina is upset because she feels inferior to Maria. Maria has become unbelievably stroppy now. She refuses to do simple things just to be difficult. And my husband fusses over her all the same. I am upset with him. I've told him what he has done is childish and immature, but he refuses to accept any of this. I sleep in a separate room now, which upsets the girls, especially Dina. But I can't stand being in the same room as him right now, since he deliberately upset our daughters, and it's resulted in them being difficult for me. He's not the one looking after them, and it's very frustrating. I feel very unhappy right now. I've created a complete mess. We've been married for nine years now, and we've never had such a disagreement. It's embarrassing, since I should know how to resolve my own disagreements, but I just have no idea what to do. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I think you have a bigger problem on your hands than you are currently addressing. Your husband's favoritism of Maria is only going to make her worse as she ages, and he is already weaponizing her against you when he disagrees with you. You are right that point can hurt their feet, but obviously Maria isn't old enough to understand the ramifications this can have on her future, and is just upset that she is being denied an opportunity she would enjoy. Meanwhile, this has reinforced it for Dina that she is worse and less worthy than Maria. I think at the least, this should be grounds for a long run of couples counseling sessions. But I would personally consider your husband's favoritism alone to be a deal breaker. And obviously we are long past that point now. You are trying very hard to protect one of your daughters from damage to her feet, but not doing enough to protect both your daughters from long-term damage to their mental wellness. Comment two. As a mother of a child who dances, yes, kids can absolutely develop problems if they start point too early. They have to be physically developed enough, plus have strong enough technique that they are less likely to injure themselves. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with waiting another year to make sure your child is strong enough to handle it. Having said that, I am concerned about your comment about the teachers favoring one daughter over another. They are trained to see things you don't see, and it will be natural for one child to develop at a different rate than the other. Your husband telling your children about the situation is completely manipulative and not okay. You two need to have a serious discussion about it and possibly counseling to learn how to handle conflict better. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. After my husband told Maria about my decision, things got even more complicated. Maria started acting out more, and it was clear she was trying to get back at me for what she saw as an unfair decision. She started skipping her regular ballet classes, saying she didn't see the point if she couldn't do point. This was really hard for me to handle because I knew how much she loved ballet, and it felt like she was punishing herself to make a point. Dinah, on the other hand, became even more withdrawn. She started having trouble sleeping and would often come to my room in the middle of the night, saying she felt scared or had bad dreams. I tried to comfort her, but it was clear that the tension in the house was affecting her deeply. She even started making more mistakes in her ballet classes, which only made her feel worse about herself. My husband and I continued to argue about the situation. He accused me of being overprotective and not trusting Maria's abilities. I tried to explain that my decision was based on concern for her health but he wouldn't listen. He kept saying that I was holding Maria back because I didn't want her to outshine Dina. This hurt me deeply because it wasn't true, but it was clear that he believed it. One evening, things came to a head. Maria had another meltdown, refusing to eat dinner and yelling that she hated ballet and hated me for ruining her chances. Dina started crying and my husband just sat there, not saying anything. I felt completely alone and overwhelmed. I decided to take a walk to clear my head. But when I came back, things had gotten even worse. My husband had called Maria's ballet teacher and arranged for her to start point classes behind my back. He told Maria and she was ecstatic. Dina, however, was devastated. She felt completely left out and even more inferior to her sister. I was furious with my husband for going behind my back and making such a significant decision without consulting me. We had a huge fight that night. I told him that he had crossed the line and that I couldn't trust him anymore. He accused me of being controlling and not caring about Maria's future. It was clear that we were at an impasse and I didn't know how to move forward. The next day, I decided to talk to the ballet teacher myself. I explained my concerns about Maria starting point too early and asked if there was any way to delay it. The teacher was sympathetic, but said that the decision had already been made and that Maria was scheduled to start the following week. I felt completely powerless and didn't know what to do. In the meantime, Dina's anxiety continued to worsen. She started having panic attacks and even missed a few days of school because she felt too overwhelmed to go. I took her to see a therapist who said that the family tension was likely contributing to her anxiety. This was a wake-up call for me and I realized that I needed to find a way to resolve the situation for the sake of both of my daughters. I tried to talk to my husband again, but he was still adamant that Maria should start point. He said that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and that we couldn't hold her back. I felt like I was banging my head against a wall and didn't know how to get through to him. In the end, I had to make a difficult decision. I decided to let Maria start point, even though I still had concerns about her health. I hoped that by doing so, it would ease some of the tension in the house and help Dina feel less anxious. It was a hard choice, and I felt like I was betraying my own beliefs, but I didn't see any other way to move forward. Maria was thrilled when I told her the news, but Dina was still upset. She felt like her feelings didn't matter, and that Maria was always going to be the favorite. I tried to reassure her that she was just as important and talented, but it was clear that she didn't believe me. As the weeks went by, Maria started her point classes and seemed to be doing well. However, Dina's anxiety didn't improve, and she continued to struggle in her ballet classes. I felt like I had made the wrong decision and that I had let both of my daughters down. Looking back, I realized that the root of the problem went deeper than just the ballet classes. My husband and I had different parenting styles and priorities, and this had been a source of tension for a long time. He had always been more focused on achievements and success, while I was more concerned with our daughter's well-being and happiness. This difference had come to a head with the ballet situation 
but it had been simmering beneath the surface for years. I remembered a conversation we had early in our marriage, before the girls were born. We had talked about our hopes and dreams for our future children, and I had said that I wanted them to be happy and healthy above all else. My husband had agreed at the time, but it was clear that his priorities had shifted over the years. He had become more focused on pushing the girls to excel, especially Maria, and this had created a rift between us. I also thought about my own childhood and how my parents had always supported me in my gymnastics, but never pushed me to the point of sacrificing my health. I wanted to give my daughters the same kind of support, but it was clear that my husband had a different vision for their future. In the end, I realized that we needed to find a way to bridge this gap and come to a mutual understanding. It wasn't just about the ballet classes. It was about our entire approach to parenting and what we wanted for our daughter's future. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined to find a way to make it work for the sake of our family. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for refusing to give up my favorite snack? Because my boyfriend thinks it looks like testicles. So I'm in a very weird situation and I don't know how to proceed. I'm hoping to get some insight from people who don't know us personally, because this is really embarrassing for me. So to preface, I'm a cheese lover. I absolutely adore cheese and it's my favorite snack. My number one cheese has got to be mozzarella, specifically ball-shaped mozzarella. The texture and flavor are so good, especially with a little salt sprinkled. I buy those Belgio Yoso packs of mozzarella balls, and they have been my snack of choice since I was a freshman in college. They were easy and convenient to keep in my mini fridge for a quick, cheap, and easy bite. My boyfriend and I have been dating for three years now, and we recently moved in together. He's known about my love for cheese since our first date. He took me to a restaurant, and we ordered like three charcuterie boards. Lol. I don't think he knew what he was getting into with my snacking, and he probably didn't expect to see me eat mozzarella balls on the daily. I thought he was fine with it, but now he's making an issue out of it, and I don't know if I should stop. His specific issue is the shape of the cheese. He tells me that seeing me eat ball-shaped cheese makes him uncomfortable. He says that it is lewd and that, and I quote, seeing me pop a wet cheese ball in my mouth makes him think of me having another man's balls in my mouth. Yeah, I was really confused, and I told him that I don't think this is that big of a deal and that it's literally cheese, but he told me the imagery still grosses him out. I thought we could work through this, but after a while, he said it might be a deal breaker if I don't stop. Afterwards, he left for work. During the argument, he said he doesn't care if I eat mozzarella cheese, but he just wants me to eat it string or shred it instead. I know this is so high maintenance of me, but mozzarella balls are just my favorite snack. The texture, the taste, it's just so good. I like shredded cheese and string cheese, but they just aren't the same. I'm thinking I should maybe buy the smaller mozzarella balls that Belgioioso sells and hope they won't bother him. But if I feed into this, could it reinforce this mindset he has? I don't know what to do. I want to make him comfortable, but this feels really controlling and unnecessary. Not to mention, I don't really want to give up on my favorite snack. He's a great guy. And I know this post isn't doing justice, but I just want to know if this is a red flag from him or if putting my foot down on this is unreasonable. Thank you in advance to anyone who reads this and offers me some advice. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Guy sounds like a weirdo, to be honest. Equating mozzarella balls with another man's testicles is the stretch of the century. He needs therapy. Comment two. You're a grown woman who went through college, and you're settling for and defending a man who won't let you eat cheese balls. What the FK? Now for the update, thanks for all the comments from the last post. So things have taken a bit of a turn this past week, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything that's happened. After our argument about the mozzarella balls, I decided to try and compromise. I went out and bought the smaller mozzarella balls hoping that they wouldn't bother him as much. When he came home from work and saw them in the fridge, he seemed relieved and thanked me for trying to meet him halfway. I thought that would be the end of it, but boy, was I wrong. A couple of days later, we were having dinner, and out of nowhere, he brought up the cheese thing again. He said he appreciated my effort, but still felt uncomfortable. 
He then suggested that maybe we should see a therapist to talk about it. I was taken aback. I mean, therapy over cheese? But I agreed because I wanted to understand where he was coming from and maybe get to the root of why this was such a big deal for him. We had our first therapy session three days ago. The therapist asked us to talk about our feelings and why this issue was so important to each of us. My boyfriend started talking about how he felt disrespected and how the cheese balls made him feel insecure. He admitted that it wasn't just about the cheese, but about feeling like I wasn't considering his feelings. That's when things got really interesting. The therapist asked him if there were other instances where he felt disrespected or insecure in our relationship. He hesitated, but then started talking about how he sometimes feels like I prioritize my own needs and preferences over his. He mentioned a few other things like how I always choose the movies we watch or how I decide where we go out to eat. I was shocked because he never brought these things up before. I realized that this wasn't just about cheese. It was about a pattern of behavior that made him feel undervalued. I felt terrible and apologized for not noticing how he felt. The therapist suggested that we both need to communicate better and be more considerate of each other's feelings. We left the session feeling hopeful, but also with a lot to think about. The next day, I decided to make a conscious effort to include him in decisions more. I asked him what movie he wanted to watch, and we ended up watching one of his favorite action films. I also asked him where he wanted to go for dinner, and we went to his favorite burger place. He seemed happier, and I felt like we were making progress. But then, something unexpected happened. Yesterday, while we were cleaning the apartment, I found an old photo album of his. I started flipping through it and saw pictures of him with his ex-girlfriend. I didn't think much of it until I saw a picture of them at a cheese tasting event. They were both holding mozzarella balls and laughing. I felt a pang of jealousy and confusion. Was this why he was so weird about the cheese balls? I confronted him about the photo, and he admitted that his ex used to love mozzarella balls too. He said that seeing me eat them brought back memories of her and made him feel uncomfortable. He never told me this before, and I felt hurt that he kept it from me. But it also made sense why he was so fixated on the cheese balls. We had a long talk about it, and he apologized for not being honest with me from the start. He said he didn't want to bring up his ex because he didn't want to make me feel insecure. I told him that I appreciated his honesty and that we needed to be more open with each other about our feelings. This whole situation has been very eventful of emotions, but I feel like we're finally getting to the root of the issue. It's not just about cheese. It's about communication and being considerate of each other's feelings. We've decided to continue with therapy to work on our communication and make sure we're both feeling valued in the relationship. I also learned something about myself. I realized that I can be a bit stubborn and set in my ways. I need to be more open to compromise and consider my boyfriend's feelings more. It's not just about what I want. It's about what we both want as a couple. So that's where we are now. We're working on our communication and trying to be more considerate of each other's feelings. It's not easy, but I think we're on the right track. Thanks for reading and for all the advice. Am I the idiot for secretly getting a paternity test and confronting my wife about her affair? I've been married to my wife for three years and together for five. Our son just turned two in early June. And to put it bluntly, he looks biracial. His skin is darker than I thought it would have been. He has curly hair when we most certainly don't. And his features just don't look like the standard white people, which we are. He's a beautiful boy. He just doesn't look 100% white. I asked my wife a few days after his birthday if she thought our son looked white. She said yes and asked if I'm accusing her of something. I said no because I genuinely wasn't. I just wondered. I know genetics can be weird sometimes. We fought and I apologized but I wasn't able to shake the feeling, so I did the shitty thing and got a test done behind my wife's back. The results came in a few days ago, and I'm not my son's dad. I feel conflicted about my son. I love him, but knowing that he isn't mine is leaving a sour taste in my mouth. Our son definitely prefers me, and he's my world, but he's just not biologically mine. I don't know what to make of my feeling. I'm a mix of emotions about my wife. I don't know how to talk to her. I'm angry, confused, and feeling very, very betrayed. I'm heartbroken too. I still love her. She's working at the moment, and I don't want to disturb her at her office, but I feel like I'm going to explode.
This is all very difficult for me to process and I can't. I can't think of when my wife cheated. We always had each other's locations for safety purposes. And I can't think of any suspicious friends that she has or had. We go on regular dates and our bedroom isn't dead. We were also trying for a baby around that time. So I don't know when she cheated on me or why. Ever since we married, she's been over the moon, constantly showing off her ring and talking about me. She's like a teenager in love. How do I tell her that I know or get that ball rolling? I don't know what I want to do yet, as stupid as that sounds. I've been stewing on it for a few days, but I still love her so much. Maybe someone can knock some sense into me. I need help. To add, I'm becoming overwhelmed with the comments. I'm sorry. I wanted to reply to a few, but I can't. I just wanted to say thank you for commenting and that I also hope our baby was just swapped, as terrible as that sounds. Our baby didn't look biracial at birth. As he got older, he started developing features that didn't look entirely like ours. If our son's skin didn't darken over time, I don't think I ever would have questioned anything. The other features can be explained as a fun little surprise or a few generation hops, maybe. I know that genetics can be weird. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. You mentioned that you were trying. Did you do any in vitro fertilization? I just watched a documentary where a fertility doctor switched his sperm for any male patient's sperm. Also, there could have been a mix up there. Additionally, someone mentioned a switch at the hospital. Give her the results and ask her to start explaining. Most importantly, talk to a lawyer and immediately start separating any and all financial accounts. As for the whole location being on thing, yes, yeah, someone can leave their phone in one place while they physically go to another place and then come back to pick up the phone so you can't rely on that. If you have will and determination, you can figure out anything. Comment two. This is where you need to be strategic, not emotional. I'd get a second test just to be sure. And I might even have the child tested against her DNA, if you can obtain it, as it would rule out a hospital mix-up. Super rare, but it does happen. Then talk with a lawyer and probably withdraw half of any shared accounts before confronting her. Edit. Yes, check with the lawyer before withdrawing money. The reality is that either person on a joint account can empty it. If you are reliant on a partner who has been scientifically proven untrustworthy, take steps to protect yourself. Now for the update. Thanks for all the comments from the last post. So, three months have passed since I found out that I'm not my son's biological father. It's been interesting to say the least, to say the least. I finally mustered up the courage to talk to my wife about it. One evening after our son had gone to bed, I sat her down and told her everything. I showed her the test results and asked her to explain. She was shocked and started crying, saying she had no idea how this could have happened. She swore she never cheated on me and suggested that maybe there was a mix-up at the hospital. We decided to get another test done, this time with both of us present, to rule out any mistakes. The results came back the same. My wife was devastated and kept insisting that she had been faithful. We started looking into the possibility of a hospital mix-up more seriously. We contacted the hospital where our son was born and requested an investigation. They were cooperative, but said it would take some time to review records and conduct their own tests. During this period, my relationship with my wife was strained. We were both on edge and every conversation seemed to turn into an argument. I was still angry and hurt and she was frustrated and scared. Our son, oblivious to all this, continued to be his cheerful self, which made things even more complicated. I couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt every time I looked at him, knowing that he wasn't mine biologically. One night, after another heated argument, my wife broke down and confessed something that changed everything. She admitted that she had a one-night stand during a business trip around the time we were trying for a baby. She said it was a mistake, a moment of weakness, and she had regretted it ever since. She didn't think it was possible that the man she slept with could be the father because they used protection but now she wasn't so sure. This revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. I felt a mix of anger, betrayal, and sadness. I couldn't believe she had kept this from me for so long. I needed some space to process everything. So I decided to stay with a friend for a few days. During this time, I did a lot of thinking. I realized that despite everything, I still loved my wife and my son. 
I didn't want to throw away our marriage without trying to work things out. When I returned home, we had a long, honest conversation. My wife apologized profusely and said she was willing to do whatever it took to rebuild my trust. We decided to go to couples therapy to help us navigate this difficult time. Therapy has been helpful, but it's a slow process. We're both committed to making our marriage work, but it's going to take time to heal. In the meantime, the hospital investigation concluded that there was no mix-up. Our son was indeed the result of my wife's affair. This was a hard pill to swallow, but it also brought some closure. We could finally move forward without any lingering doubts. The fallout from all this has been significant. My relationship with my wife is still rocky, but we're making progress. We're learning to communicate better and be more honest with each other. I've also had to come to terms with my feelings about my son. Despite everything, I love him and want to be there for him. He's an innocent child who didn't ask for any of this, and he deserves a loving father. I've also had to confront some of my own insecurities and fears. The whole situation has made me question my worth as a husband and father. Therapy has helped me work through these feelings and understand that my worth isn't defined by my biological connection to my son. Being a father is about more than just DNA. It's about love, care, and commitment. As for my wife, she's been dealing with her own guilt and shame. She's been working hard to make amends and show me that she's committed to our marriage. It's not easy and there are still days when the pain feels fresh, but we're both determined to make it work. One thing that has helped us is focusing on the positive aspects of our relationship. We've been trying to spend more quality time together as a family, doing things we enjoy and creating new memories. It's a reminder of why we fell in love in the first place and why we want to stay together. Looking back, I realized that this whole ordeal has brought some hidden feelings to the surface. It's forced us to confront issues we might have otherwise ignored and made us stronger as a couple. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're on the right path. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.